in the heart of Yorkshire. Hello, most band. An unbeatable team. That way. And stop, we're going to lay you down. Hard at work, 24 hours a day. Does it count as your daily exercise? <laughs> Seven days a week. I can smell it now. It's a really bad burn. Saving lives. It might be that we need to put you to sleep oh. in order to try and sort this out. Helping loved ones. It's a shocker, that. Making the community they serve better. We got you, lad. You're being such a good boy. A health service treating anyone. Car door, house door. Van door. Big van door. Yes. So it's quite impressive, isn't it? And everyone. Oh, you're going to have a good black eye. Are you a doctor? A team doing anything and everything for each other. It's just been mantled down here. I will do it. I'll get to it. Oh. Oh, oh. We're strong people in Barnsley, you know. This is Barnsley Casualty 24-7. You're absolutely all diamonds. Brilliant. We fixed it! <laughs> On shift tonight, Sister Jane. No beds. There's no beds. Physician associate Adele. Squeeze my hand if you need to. Oh, oh, oh. And Dr. Phil Taylor. I'm just going to wait for your heart rate to come up a little bit. So, get ready to share a shift. It's sunny day. With the team at Barnsley Casualty. I've not filled it too much because I don't want you to spill it. It's breakfast time, and Sister Jane is starting her shift. Hi, it's Jane. A busy night shift has had a knock-on effect this morning. Ten hours, Doctor, wait at the minute. Uh, but the new doctors have come out and beds, there doesn't appear to be any. When they have had a busy night, the night before, and you come in on the morning, you can often have 70 or 80 patients in the department. But every patient needs to see a doctor before they can be admitted or discharged. So, there's already a backlog of work. Pans, I need department. But more patients keep arriving. COPD, shortness of breath. OK. Paramedics are bringing in a 69-year-old woman. Susan's been taken straight to Rhesus. She's struggling to breathe. Susan, are we sliding you over or are you standing up, love? We need to get you on this bench. We need to put you back on this oxygen, love. She has an incurable lung disease known as COPD. <coughs> When patients have got COPD, their lungs aren't healthy, they can't get enough air in sometimes, they don't ventilate properly, so they can build up carbon dioxide in the blood and not get enough oxygen in as well. It can make them extremely unwell. What are you bringing up off your chest? Just phlegm. Just phlegm. Any colour? Green. Green. And any blood or anything like that? No, that what other week. OK. What, you've been bringing blood up? Yeah. The worst case scenario with Susan is that her oxygen levels become that low, she goes into a respiratory arrest and stops breathing. So this is what your, your cough's been like? Oh, oh. With Susan's breathing deteriorating... You have oxygen at home, don't you? Yeah. Advanced clinical practitioner Chantel must increase Susan's oxygen levels urgently. In the hub, Sister Jane is battling a ten-hour doctor wait. Where are all the doctors? She makes a call to try and draft in more staff. I mean, even if she, like, woke up now and came in at nine or half nine. All right, see you in a bit, bye. The sooner reinforcements can arrive, the better. Is it her? CT? No, she's on a trauma mattress. Another emergency patient is on their way in. Paramedics take him straight to the ambulance corridor. A lapsed in concentration, and that's all it needs. 92-year-old Donald has fallen at home, pegging out his washing. I'd practice getting over that step, but not with the full basket of washing. That's thing. where you went wrong. Yeah, I, I took my eye off the ball. And, it's a, it's a funny sensation. Uh, have, you, have you had it? Uh, head hitting concrete. 
Fortunately, not yet. <laughs> right, Don, we're moving into this tomb. We're okay. All right. Wow. I'm going to lay you back ever so slightly. We're going to lift you across, okay? Very good. Test your muscles. Are we ready? Ready, steady, slow. Oh, that was without incident. Well, that's how we like it, without incident. Well, don't get me to sit you up again. <laughs> <laughs> me, me, that's better. How's that? That's, that's yeah. splendid. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> you probably take your cat off to ask. Paramedics leave him with his daughter, Ruth. Oh, we'll put it there. <laughs> What does it look like? You look like you've been right in the wars. <laughs> I'm not at my best. <laughs> Donald is moved to cubicle 15 to be assessed by a doctor. My own private suite. What have you done today then? Have you fallen? Yeah. What were you doing at the time? Going to hang the washing out. You know, I do think the tumble dryer is a really good invention, Dad. Have you got a tumble dryer? Yeah. It's sunny day. I know. It just says save energy. That's it. Important things it's a, first, hey? It's a bit nice and dry by the time you get home. Hopefully. We shall overcome. Yeah, I don't know. That's all done. I'll get them both Is that sent it? Off. That's it. I'll get them both sent off for you now. Suddenly, Donald's condition deteriorates. Nurse Amy alerts Dr. Taylor. He's gone drip white, feeling very nauseous. Right. Yeah. Stomachache. Hello there, sir. Is it Donald? Yeah. Hello there. My name's Phil. I'm one of the doctors. This is Hannah, one of our medical students. When Donald first came in, he was very talkative, very chatty, um, very alert and orientated. And in the last five minutes, he has become a lot more quiet, looks a bit more disorientated, become quite pale, quite clammy, and looks like he's deteriorating clinically. Hey, you've been feeling a bit peaky in the last five minutes. Yes, um, I don't feel well now. Dr. Taylor needs to establish if Donald's dramatic deterioration is life-threatening. No beds. There's no beds. Sister Jane is battling to reduce the long doctor weight in casualty. Can you just give Tom a hand to pull this wrist? Superb. So when you come on to any shift, there's a limited number of beds uh, because generally there's a lot of people in them and they don't get discharged until the doctors come in and do the discharges. So it becomes a case of just waiting, sitting and waiting for the discharges to take place. While they wait, advanced clinical practitioner Chantel is doing her bit to ease the workload of the doctors in resource. <coughs> She's caring for Susan, who's struggling to breathe. Were you here a few days ago? Yeah, and then I was in for a couple of days. Have you ever been in intensive care unit for your breathing? Not that I can remember of it, well. OK. And have you ever had to go on any ventilation? Yeah. You have? That mask? Yeah. When Susan was in last time, um, they put her on something called NIV, which is non-invasive ventilation. I don't want to go on that. Well, I don't, I don't want you to go on that. Oh, I don't want to go on that one. No chance. It's not nice, is it? It can be quite claustrophobic for a patient. If someone's struggling to breathe, putting a mask on someone's face that's forcing air in and out can make patients quite panicky. Right, and we need to take a sample here. You've had this done before, haven't you? The reason that we'd put a patient on this is if their carbon dioxide levels are too high. The pain's all off. To check Susan's carbon dioxide levels, advanced clinical practitioner Chantel takes a blood sample. You've got weak pulses. Well, I've never had before, Pat. You've never had weak pulses before? No. Your blood pressure's a bit low, though. When your carbon dioxide levels are too high, it can make your blood acidic, which can make you extremely unwell. They're not nice, are they? You OK? Yeah. OK, and I'll run this blood test and I'll have a listen to your chest, OK? Yeah. Susan's symptoms may be due to an infection on her lungs. Right, let's have a listen. Nice big breath in. And out. Big breath in. And out. 
There was quite a lot of crackles um, and wheeze on her chest, so she was quite restricted. Susan urgently needs an X-ray. She's too ill to travel, so radiology comes to her. Just rest on bed for me, that's it. Hold your breath. And breathe normally again. While they wait for the results, Susan is given oxygen. So I'm going to try you on what you are on at home. Yeah. Which is one litre, isn't it? Yeah. If her breathing doesn't improve, she may need to be placed on a ventilator. Hi, it's only Jane, one of the sisters in A&E. In the hub, Sister Jane is trying to draft in extra staff as she battles a long doctor wait. Lovely, thanks darling, bye. There's just no staff. You know, it's not only A&E that are short, the wards are short, theatres are short, every speciality is short. The team works hard together regardless of whether there's less staff. So they, they just all pull together anyway. Obviously it's harder because they have more to do. Someone else who doesn't mind a bit of hard graft is outside radiology. Everybody say, keeps saying I should stop working, but I can't, I love work. <laughs> Farm worker Edward is waiting for an X-ray on a suspected dislocated shoulder. He's 78 and has been working most of his life. Well, I'm still at school. I used to help at weekends, any school holidays, and rather than give me any money, he gave me a little pig and the food to keep it. <laughs> And it was fat, I took it to the to the butcher spot and I got the money. Can you lean forwards for me? Thank you. That's it, lean back. Physician associate Adele. Can I slip into this computer? Reviews Edward's X-ray. Looks out of socket there. This will be the first time she has attempted to replace a dislocated shoulder. I was a little bit nervous about doing it, but I knew I had the skills to do it, and the best way to learn is definitely by getting involved and trying to put them back into place. So, Edward, my name's Adele. Is it a fall that you've had? A trip to... Was this... I don't know what a trip to... Was. OK. Did you hit your head at all? I didn't hit my head. OK. Can you remember everything that's happened? Everything. Lovely. I haven't been at doctors, doctors for at least 20 years. Do you know, I could have guessed that by you saying that you were a farmer. <laughs> I very rarely see farmers, and I think it's because they're so active, they probably just have a very good lifestyle. So I think when they, when they do come in, they really do need to come in. We've had an X-ray of your shoulder. Mm. Looks like you've dislocated it. Dislocated. So I'm just going to ask one of my colleagues to help pop it back in place. Yes. Does that sound OK? That's a painful job. We'll give, you, we'll give you some pain relief for that. Edward is given an oral anaesthetic painkiller to relax him, and consultant Dr Thomas Shaw assists. Well done. You might start to feel a bit woozy with this medicine that we're giving you. If it gets too sore, let us know. Oh, it's hurting. OK, well, just stop moving for a second. Well done. If you want to squeeze on Adele's hand, that's absolutely fine. Obviously, I've read in textbooks how to do it, but reading about it and doing it in person is a lot different. <sighs> Try and take nice, slow breaths, and you can breathe in on that. Well done. <sighs> Keep taking slow breaths in and out. Squeeze my hand if you need to. Oh. Should I felt it by now? Yeah. Edward's shoulder has not gone back into position. When you dislocate your shoulder, it can either pop out forwards for an anterior dislocation, or it can pop out backwards to posterior dislocation. It can be hard to tell on X-ray which way it's done. The techniques that we were doing were for anterior dislocations because that is the most common type of dislocation. Could it be that Edward's dislocation is a rare one? The medical team will have to try a different technique to avoid surgery.
Back in cubicle 15, Dr. Taylor is assessing Donald. His condition has taken a sudden turn for the worse after being admitted with a head injury. Can you point to where it's sore? Right in the centre, all right. Yeah. And is it a sharp pain? Is it a dull pain? A dull pain. He could potentially have concussion from his head injury. And then the more concerning thing to rule out would be a bleed on the brain. So I'm going to send him for a CT scan. Can I do a quick MOT and have a listen to your heart, your lungs, have a feel on the tummy and just check yeah. that everything's yeah, okay? Well, okay. All right. Before he sends Donald for a scan, he checks his vitals. Let's just calculate your rate manually. OK, heart rate's going about 36, which is quite slow. Donald's heart rate should read between 60 and 100. At 36, it's dangerously low. The last thing I want is you fainting or passing out when you're in the scanner. All right? Absolutely. All right. Did you, did you hear that? No. I want to just make sure that you don't pass out or faint in the scanner, given that your heart's going so slowly. So his current status is not due to the head, it's due to the heart, do you think? It could be a combination of both. Okay. His heart rate is going slow enough to make him feel dizzy and woozy. Right. He could also feel dizzy and woozy because of the head. So there's yeah. two possible contributing right. factors. All right? OK. Yeah. He's obviously feeling really quite unwell now. Yeah, no, I can, I can, I can see that. Doctor Taylor needs to rule out a bleed on Donald's brain. He can't send him for a scan until his heart rate is at a much safer level. No, she's been here hours, five she's just hours. Going. Sister Jane has reduced the waiting time to see a doctor to seven and a half hours. Right, so when she comes back, she can go straight to CDU. But as quickly as she eases the situation, more patients come in. Have a seat. 80-year-old Michael has walked in after he fell, running for a bus. Hello, sir. I'm Chris, one of the doctors. As Michael suffered a head injury, he goes to the top of Dr Chris Yeoman's long patient list. I went to town, and normally I'll go in car. My wife will say, go in car. I said, no, I'm going up bus yeah. today. So I crossed the road, and when the bus was coming around the corner, so I set off to run, and the length, the slang just gave way, and down the length. When you say your legs given way, is that, just are you, you're sure that's what's happened? It's not that you've had sudden headaches, oh, chest no, pain, no, no, dizziness, no, back no, pain, belly no, pain, anything like that. All, so you remember the whole thing? I remember it clearly. Yeah, OK, fine. I could see that he had a bump in the graze on his forehead and bridge of his nose area, which made me concerned about a head injury, but also about a potential neck injury. How's your neck feeling? My neck does ache. Where does it ache? More on the on the right hand side. More on the right. OK, fine. I can get you to hop up on here. Yeah, I feel that now. When you stood up, yeah. You feel that both sides? I feel it more this side. Dr Yeoman tests to check for any signs of a stroke. What, what about further up as we come up? I, I can feel it, but... Not it's a bit, it's a bit less, isn't it? Yeah. So I'm looking for any weakness in the arms or the legs, any change in sensation, any change in coordination that perhaps is new for him that may have been sustained from the fall but may have also perhaps caused the fall. Can I ask you to push away? A bit weaker, isn't it? How was that like this? Like that with your wrists again. Don't let me push it down again, OK? So keep it up, keep it up. Why is that one not staying up? Is it normally a bit weaker, do you think, or is it...? Well, I'm not down there, so I Oh, okay. There are a couple of things that I would like to do, all right? I'm going to get an x-ray of this hip area, because I think in the context of the fact you've fallen, banged the front of your head and gone backwards with your neck, presumably, I think we should just get a scan of your head and neck, just to make sure we're not missing anything. I know you've walked in, but from now on, we're going to pop some things either side of your head just to keep you still, OK? Hello! How did you fall? 
Well, I'm going to fart both in this leg good way. Oh. oh, is it you that your wife told you to take the car? That's right. Oh. I bet you wish you took car now, didn't you? Yeah. It's probably burn me bus pass now. <laughs> so these are the blocks, I just keep keep doing still. Michael's head must be kept perfectly still while he has a CT scan to rule out life-changing spinal injuries. Barnes a casualty, Sister Jane has reduced the doctor wait time to just under six hours. Tracy, it's only Jane. Is this bed going to be pulled? Send it now. OK. All right. Patients have been discharged and others are being moved to the wards. Can that patient go to 35 before there are trolley breach? But there's no let up. Can you triage? Sister Jane must keep the patient flow moving. Gifu, you go back onto blue, Megan can go to scan. Trauma scan with that one, sweetheart, thank you. But some patients are too poorly to leave casualty. Let me have a listen to your chest now. You've had that nebulizer. In recess, advanced clinical practitioner Chantel is caring for Susan, who's struggling to breathe. Nice big breath in. If I saw the numbers for a patient without seeing Susan in person, I would expect this patient to look extremely unwell, to the point of needing critical care or needing some senior support. Hello. I've just gone like, hey, well, well, why, what's up? But then looking at Susan in bed, she looks like she's just come because she's hurt her ankle or she's got a bruise to her face or something like that. I'm in recess, love. I'm in recess in hospital. And nurses said, can you stop ringing, well, because I'm poorly, and I've got to rest. What? What are you on about? One of the main causes of COPD is smoking. I think Susan's a smoker. Susan, do you smoke? Yeah. How long have you smoked for? 49 years. So, as I said? I was 19. <laughs> as thick as pig <laughs> I think Susan goes beyond being Barnsley. I think there's another level of Susan's Barnsley-ness. <laughs> I met that dozy Philip. I ended up marrying. Susan reminds me of the older Yorkshire generation where no matter how poorly they are, they make a joke about it, they brush things off, they act as though they're not poorly. I trained as a secretary and my family. And then I went into jobs coincided with my kids, do you know what I mean? And school did a school cleaning and I did barmaid in that night. Some of Susan's test results are back. Your carbon dioxide levels are high and your oxygen levels are a little bit low. Okay, and it's making your blood acidic. So what we're gonna try and do is decrease your oxygen as much as we can and give you some nebulizers to open your airways up so hopefully you can ventilate a bit better and get rid of that carbon dioxide naturally. Yeah, because I'm going to try and prevent you from going on that machine. Oh, thank God for that then. <laughs> Her x-rays are back too. There's no focal point of infection that I can see, which is good. I think it's probably just my COPD, just getting worse. So your x-ray is not bad, Susan. Check it, No. And your blood tests are OK as well. I'm just getting your nebulizer set up. I'll be right, have a cup of... Well, let's get this in, and then I'll get you a cup after. How's that? Yeah, you've been saying that for the part of it. <laughs> Susan is given more medication. We have blood To open up her airways. If this doesn't work, she'll be placed on a ventilator. Travelling back to cubicle 11, 80-year-old Michael has just had a CT scan of his head and neck. Anything you need before I go? A little drink of water, can I have? Yeah. I'll get you one, I'll be right. Michael's wife of 60 years calls to check in on him. You think you'll be coming home? I'm hoping so. I can't cope with this, mate. No, I can't. All right. You're all right, darling. All right. Tell her for now. I've not filled it too much because I don't want you to spill it. Alright. 
Like that. <laughs> what did that say? <laughs> Are we right now? Do you want me to put that in bin? Uh, you know, I want me in it bin, I think. <laughs> Do you don't want another drink now? No. Right. No. You've got to laugh, haven't you? <laughs> but she's been very, very good that now. She's been absolutely marvellous. All right, Michael. Dr. Yeoman has Michael's CT results. Your scan looks okay, you have your head and your neck, all right? What I'm going to do, I'm going to take this off and then we'll get you straight round for your hip, okay? Michael is taken to radiology for an x-ray to check if he's broken his hip when he fell. Let's keep super still there now. That's okay. everything that we need. You take care, Michael. It's all right for your head and your neck? Yeah, that would all right. Oh, good. Yeah, so the brain's still there. The brain's still there. Did you tell me you're a silly billy? Uh, okay, okay, then, Dad. All right, well, ta-da okay. for now. ta for now, love. Bye. Bye. Dr Hidesh Chatter has Michael's hip x-ray. And what we can see, the bone structure's really good. There's no breaks in the cortex that we can see. There's some arthritis, as you would expect at this age, really. Um, yeah, there's, like, there's no fractures or anything like that, so that's good. Hi, Michael. The x-ray of your hip looks absolutely fine. Oh, that's good. Because there's a bit of arthritis, but as you would expect at the age of 80, to be honest, so yeah, that's pretty good. What age? 80. <laughs> <laughs> Is it alright if we just see you standing up on your legs and just see, make sure you're... Uh... That's pretty good, yeah. So you feel comfortable putting weight? Yeah. Let's give you some painkillers and make sure you're back up to speed. I'll get you on your way. Right, thanks ever so much. You're welcome, not a problem. All right. Thanks a lot. He's good to go and makes a final call home. It's my good lady, Penelope Ann. She told me not to go on the bus. Well, I've been married 60 years this uh, October, so I've got to keep well in with her else. My darling, just to let you know, everything's all right. So I'll be able to come home and... I'll watch you burn me bus pass. <laughs> Definitely. OK. Bye for now. Bye for now, Louis. Oh, Love you. Michael's on his way home. Just through this way. He opted to walk this time and leave his bus pass in his pocket. The following week, Michael fell again and spent a week in hospital where he was diagnosed with a water infection, which had been affecting his balance. Back in the hub, the doctor wait is down to four hours. Sister Jane is getting her hands dirty to speed things along further. I just need to get this wrist done because I'm in charge, so I just need to... I'm just going to be quick, sweetie. There are a million jobs that need doing, especially if you've got a number of patients in there and a large doctor wait. So often you'll go off and put a pot on or something like that. There you go, love. It's quite therapeutic putting a pot on. You know, because you like rub it in, it's just, it's like playing with clay. I would imagine like potter's wheels are like that, it's nice. It's a constant battle keeping the doctor wait times down, especially as most patients in Rhesus require a team of medics. And it's the same in Rhesus Bay B. Just going to give you a minute or so. Dr Shaw and physician associate Adele have been working together. Clearly, you can see a lump where the jewel head is. Yeah. Got an empty there, yeah. It? They failed to manipulate Edward's dislocated shoulder back into its socket. They analyse his x rays again. When it wasn't going back into position, that's when we reassessed and thought, actually, that is the posterior dislocation. So we would, then were trying a different technique. What we'll try is, um, right. I think it's internal rotation. Okay. And then, then traction. Yeah. So we'll that give that again. Deep breath in. So it's pulling as hard. Oh, okay. Oh. So straightening, straightening oh. your arms. Yeah. Oh. Now internally rotating. Oh. Well done, sir. Oh. Oh. Well done, sir. Oh. We're all back in. Oh, shit. Yeah. Oh. Well done. 
the amount of effort needed to pull pull his arm and keep it internally rotated as well. It was really, really hard. <sighs> right. That we felt it go back mm. in. How does it feel? It certainly feels different. Good different or bad different? Good. <laughs> Good different. <laughs> <laughs> Edward is taken for a second x-ray. Do you feel better? A lot better than I did when I paid the deal last time. <laughs> and physician associate Adele checks the shoulder is back in position. On this one, if you compare it, it sort of looks out of socket compared to that one. It looks much more in socket. And given the fact that we heard the click and that his pain's improved, all in keeping, looks like it's back in position, back in joint. Can I just have a little feel, if that's OK? Is it good toast? Mm. There's something about hospital toast, isn't there? <laughs> and can you feel me pressing around this area? Yes. Yeah? Doesn't look to me like there's any nerve damage there, OK? Oh, that's good. Before he leaves, Edward takes a call from his nearest and dearest. Oh, I'm feeling it a lot better now. Oh, yeah, I've been sucking at some stuff, it was that painful. Here they are. Gone. <laughs> Who is that, Edward? A girlfriend. Have you got a girlfriend? <laughs> yeah, a girlfriend. Is she going to come see you and look after you? <laughs> uh, does she live with you, then? No, no, we're not married as yet. Oh, OK. No. Is that the plan? <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> I can't be going out in 30 years. <laughs> well, your knees are working perfectly fine, so there's no reason why you can't get down on one knee. <laughs> I've got some good news, then. You can go home now and you can get back to farming. That is that cool? a sock you keep your phone in? Yeah, it is. <laughs> like it, like it. Edward's shoulder continues to heal. Straight forward. But there's been no proposal as yet. In paediatrics, emergency nurse practitioner Tony is helping to get the waiting times down. In reception, 11-year-old Alfie is waiting with his dad Liam. He has a suspected broken finger. Like, well, we fell over at the same time, me and my mate, so I fell over and it all went backwards. Uh, I'm in a little bit of a pain, about 4 out of 10. Yeah, I'm hoping that I've not broke it, yet, but I've got way with it. Alfie has been a bit accident prone recently. I brought me on there, I've got a massive scar there. He fell off bike over a month from where it leads, angle bars went in him. I've got a blood clot in my artery. Yeah, he's got a blood clot, but we've got to go back for an odd 14 finish actually next week. We've yeah. got to go back to Leeds to see if it's uh, finning out. Gets me out of school like but... <laughs> And so you've fallen, have you fallen onto your fingers? So I played at school a minute and I fell down and I felt like I snapped on my fingers. Okay, and whereabouts is it hurting? Them two that I can't straight, I can move that, I can move them. Yeah. I just can't straighten them full of, okay. as far as so I can do. So there's your little finger on your finger next to it, all right. So, any pain around there? No? And then when we're coming up, is yeah. it there? Yeah, yeah. just a bit there. A bit there? What about your fingers? That one? No. There? There? And there? Yeah, it was. Cool. Mm -hmm. No obvious step in the bone or anything like that, but we'll uh, get sent around for an x-ray and see if we can see anything on it. So, if you follow the pictures of the bones on the wall, it takes you all the way around to the x-ray department. We'll see you back shortly. And while Alfie heads off for his x-ray, in cubicle 15, Donald is in a critical condition. Dr. Taylor needs to send him for a CT scan of his brain. But first, he has to increase his dangerously low heart rate. Hello, sir. So, right, what we're going to do is we're going to give you um, a medication just to bring your heart rate up a little bit, all right? And also, I'm just going to get some pads on the chest just to help us keep an eye on your heart rate. Daughter Ruth is by his side. I'm just going to wait for your heart rate to come up a little bit. It should come up a bit with that medication, OK? How are you feeling? Still the same? Still the same. All right. It would be unsafe to move him to CT because there's fewer hands on deck in CT. And so if he deteriorated any further, 
he would potentially be in quite a harmful position. The heart rate's come up to 50 now, which is pretty good. Still, it still is slow, all right. I think let's... Oh, there you go. We're at 60 now. Right, let's get you for a scan, OK? I'm going to come with you guys. Dr Taylor will travel with Donald to the scan. He wants to be there with life-saving equipment should he go into cardiac arrest. Cubicle 4 can go as well. Sister Jane's hard work is paying off. So 3, 4 and 5 can all go. The backlog of patients is easing. So whilst you are pleased that you can get a little bit of flow in the department, it very soon clogs up as well. You're like a hamster on a wheel. Going round and round and round. Oh, 13, they've gone. Susan is on medication to help her breathe. Advanced clinical practitioner Chantel has to repeat another crucial test. Let's get another one of these, then, though. She's checking her blood to see if her condition is improving. These numbers better be better. Right, my love, here we go again. So your job is to keep it still. There you go. Nice. No, not right, nice. That won't worry. Pop your finger on there, sweetheart. So I'm just testing to see if her pH has improved and her carbon dioxide levels have decreased. Fingers crossed. Yay, she's getting better. Your numbers are going in the right direction, which is good, but they're still not good enough for you to, to send you home. So I'm going on a ward now. Yeah, you'll be going up to acute medical unit. When someone has a chronic condition, they acclimatise and get used to low levels of oxygen and higher levels of carbon dioxide, which may explain why Susan does look really well. However, if we don't treat Susan, she can only compensate for so long before she then would go extremely poorly and potentially die. I've got some news, Susan. It's like music to my ears. You're going to one, I'm stopping. No, your bed's ready. <laughs> that will crawl that, won't it? <laughs> no, I'm joking with it. Yeah, your bed's ready, so that's good. Oh, my God, I'm caught. And you're going upstairs. OK. Susan spent a week in hospital before returning home, where a COPD is managed with oxygen. In radiology, 11-year-old Alfie is having an X-ray on his hand. Which fingers are hurting? This one. Right, so I've got the hand straight. This wedge in between your fingers, aren't you? Ooh, ooh. Oh, I know. Just chunk it down straight that way. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, sorry. Nice and still, man. Fine. Looks a bit suspect. Yeah. It looks like it might be a step. That was really painful. Radiographer Mark shows Alfie the extent of the damage. Can you see that little step there? Oh. You've got a little break on your little thing, yeah. Well, I don't think I'll do much with it, but I'm not... Just tape it up. Yeah, I'm not the uh, orthopaedic expert, <laughs> but they'll let you know. All right. Go we'll straight back to where we were. Yeah. Back in paediatrics, Alfie gets the confirmation from emergency nurse practitioner Tony. You've broken the base of your little finger. He can add one more injury to his growing list. The treatment's going to be, we're going to strap your fingers together, OK? So, by strapping the little finger and those ones together, it'll splint each other, support it. How long was saying keep that on for? Because it's a break, it will technically take six weeks, but it should feel better sooner rather than later. So, so I can't write for six weeks? I can't write, can't I? Yeah. <laughs> no excuses. Cheers for that part. But that's it then, free to go. Have a good evening. You too. <laughs> Bye. He may have broken his finger, but for Alfie, every cloud has a silver lining. Uh, it's going to stop me going out of school tomorrow. Or maybe not. I'll be back at school, don't worry about that. Alfie was back at school the next day, and his finger was fully healed after a month. Cubicle 
Uncle 13, I need it to go, sweetheart. In the hub, the doctor weight is now under control. We're down to two hours. With the wait time down, the team can finally have well-earned breaks. Elmir and em Emma, do you want to go for your breaks? Back in radiology, 92-year-old Donald has successfully undergone a CT scan. Good man. That's us all done. He's moved to Rhesus, where he can be more closely monitored. Right, darling, I'll leave you in peace now. Dr Taylor and student Dr Hannah analyse his CT scan. This is the skull, then this black is blood, yeah. and then that's the skin. She's got a bit of a haematoma, but to my eye, I can't see anything. With no sign of a bleed on Donald's brain, the medical team need to examine his wounds. Hello, sir. I'm Dr Doherty, one of the consultants here. Oh, yeah. Are you OK? Not really. No, fair enough. Do you still I, feel very sickly now? No, I'm just tummy aches. Maybe it's because it's hungry. Well, we've got some food if you want I to try even. some. Yeah. Let me get you a glass of water. Yeah. Daughter Ruth is on hand to help. Oh, I needed that. Do you want more? I do want more. Here you go, then. Mm. So, so, slow AF usually sits about That's 50. Nature of the gods. Oh, good. <laughs> you did look dry, yeah. Oh. Your blood tests are back and your kidneys are a touch dry, so I've, I've, I've written you up for a bag of fluids as well. What's mainly happened is it's bled underneath the skin, mm. mainly, and then it's leaked out from a couple of points. So there's not a big cut, yeah, right. but it obviously has bled a lot from, yeah. the, from the back of the head there. Yeah. Um, but we've got the scan to show that there isn't anything damaged deeper oh, down, so right. that's good news. I'm going to ask the nurses just to put a spot of glue over where the blood's leaked from. Right. Yeah. Stop the leaks. Yeah. We'll get you a sandwich. What would you like? Got tuna, egg mayonnaise. Oh, tuna for a change. Tuna, all right. Do you want a cup of tea? Yes, please. <laughs> that was quick. Donald's come back in to recess. We've given him a glass of water and he's perked up significantly. Um, this could just be coincidence. It could be that we've brought his heart rate up. It could be that he's had a bit of time just to, for his body to accommodate to the situation. Um, but it could also just be that he was quite thirsty and needed a drink of water. Donald, I hope you're not going to give me a bad review, but we didn't have any tuna. We do have egg mayonnaise. I've never had it. Well, it was the first time for everything. Yes, yes. yes if it's absolutely disgusting, we can find you another one from somewhere. <laughs> there weren't any in the fridge. And your cup of tea is there, OK? Right, thank you very All much. All right. Donald's wound is glued. What's the report on the sandwich? Her cheese. <laughs> You prefer cheese? <laughs> yeah, but anything in a storm. <laughs> Even though he's returned to his former lively self... Talk about comfort zone. <laughs> there ain't one. Donald was kept in overnight for observation. The following day, he enjoyed a cheese sandwich back at home. <sighs> Everybody's had the lunch, CDU are done and swapped. It's the end of a gruelling shift for Sister Jane and the team. You get to a point where you just... You can't see the wood for the trees because your mind's just blown. I've been up since half past four. I've had a yoghurt all day. I'm not even meaning sweet draw because that's empty. I think at the end of the day, although you're tired, you've gone home and done a good job to the best of your ability and you've helped some patients maybe have a bit better day than they would have had. That's my handover done, I'll just log off that. And then it's yours, love. Thank you. Sister Jane heads home, but the emergencies never stop arriving at Barnsley Casualty. <laughs>